Did you know that as of June 2022, 61% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck and 13% or almost 34 million Americans are spending more than they earned in the last few months. It is easy to say not to rely on a single job income or go and invest or go into business, but not everyone has the necessary knowledge, skills, and capital to do so. And doing things blindly will create more harm than good. That is why living paycheck to paycheck still is the most common financial lifestyle for many. It is not that bad especially if you earn a decent amount of money and can even have a good and comfortable life. But what's not good is living way above your means. You can say goodbye to that comfortable life and saying hello to a debt-ridden life that is stressful. So what you can do to escape this hellish spiral of debt, what well, comes down to discipline and budgeting. And I get wisecracks all the time. What do you know? You're a millionaire, all that other kind of shit. But I'm here to tell you I've gone through all those paths as well. There's not much you can do with your paycheck. So it's clear, simple budgeting that you can apply right now will significantly impact your lifestyle, your financial goals. So stick with me until the end and find out more. Hey guys, I'm Munif, a self-made multimillionaire who started this channel to help everyone with my life experiences on how to become successful. See, I didn't start out with much, came from the projects. So my way of giving back is my content. And guess what? I don't need YouTube to make a living, but I can use YouTube to make a life for other people. So if you like this type of content, please give this video a big thumbs up because I do put a lot of time and effort into it and hit that subscribe button. So step number one, making a contribution to an employer match. If your employer is offering a employer matched retirement plan, man it is better to take advantage of it. It could be a 401k or a 403b or anything that's a tax advantage retirement plan. So how does it work? Your employer will hold a portion of your salary, invest those dollars in your retirement plan on your behalf. For instance, if you earn $150,000 a year, which is a lot, your maximum contribution is 6% and your employer can match up to 100% of that. It's like free money right there. Meaning 6% of 150,000 would be nine grand. So 9,000 from you and another 9,000 from the boss or the employer be a total of 18 grand going to your retirement plan. It's basically free money from your employer. So not utilizing it would be a big waste. Of course, keep in mind that your employer may not opt to match your contribution 100%, but instead 50%. But nevertheless, it's still thousands of dollars that could add up. In this case, you're only going to get 4,500 from your employer. That's like a raise. And the total contribution then with your 9,000 and the 4,500 would be around 13,500. But all of that will go to your retirement plan. So it's great and it's advantageous to you. And pretty much if it's automatically going, you won't miss the money or won't even know about it. Now I know the smart aleck in you wants to say, but well, we're already living paycheck to paycheck. You need to probably cut down and make adjustments so that you can fund a retirement. Now, it doesn't matter how old you are. Earlier, the better. Number two is to pay off debt with high interest rates. Just thinking about paying off a high interest debt all at once is enough to draw a frown on your face. And I get it. You might be thinking, I'm better off using all of the money for or investments or savings, or I could just go on and pay the minimum amount now, right? Just thinking about paying a huge debt off is bothersome and burdensome to many people. But let's change things up a bit mindset wise. Instead of thinking about how burdensome or bothersome it is for you to pay debt, think about what you get or save by paying that high interest debt off right now. Your credit cards are not for you to live off of, so you don't get to buy things that you can't necessarily afford. Credit card is there to bridge gaps here and there utilize points for travel and whatnot. I'm not saying I don't believe in credit cards, but they're not to fund a lifestyle. Currently, the average credit card interest rate is well over 21.59%. And if you have a balance of 1500 on your credit card, if you only paid your minimum payment, let's say it's $500, you will have to pay the next billing cycle an additional $215 on your balance. This will accumulate more if you continue to only pay the minimum amount. Before you know it, you're already buried in debt that is impossible to pay all at once. So what you need to do is get in the habit of paying off your high interest debt. And guess what? As soon as you do, you have a guaranteed return of 21.59% coming back to you, right? You're not paying somebody else. So that's a guaranteed return right there. Establish an emergency fund. And now more than ever, you're gonna need an emergency fund. There's a lot of chaos in the marketplace, stock market, real estate market, the economy's tanking, where talks of going into a recession or worse. You never know if you have that job or that gig, or even if you work for yourself, how business is gonna do. They say that setting aside cash during a high inflation period is counterproductive because the value of your money is reduced significantly. But I say horse, you know what? I disagree with that. Regardless of whether there is a high inflation or not, emergency 
emergency funds are always necessary. It gives you a safety net and a peace of mind in case something unexpected happens. But just imagine what will happen if you suddenly lost your job or your business fails or your investments plummet and you need money for hospital bills to take care of an ailing parent or to fund something that's an emergency like your car doesn't work anymore and you don't even have a single penny to be able to utilize going further into credit card debt. Can't pay all the credit cards and now your credit cards are all locked up. Now what? This is just the worst case scenario and imagining all that can be scary. What's more, what if it does happen though? My point is being prepared never hurts. Ideally, you need at least three to six months of reserves and if you can't come up with it because you're paycheck to paycheck, get a side hustle, get the amount you need, then stop your side hustle, focus on your main hustle and there you've got a little bit of money at your disposal. If you're single, three months would be enough. Six to 12 months, if you're married and have children, I have five, I have to have a significant emergency fund. Investing for retirement, this is different from the employer matched retirement plan that I discussed earlier in the beginning of the video. So I included it here to emphasize how important a retirement plan is. And it doesn't matter if you're saying, hey, I just got out of high school, start that stuff right now. I, I started at IRA when I was 14, not because I had a load of money, it's because I worked multiple jobs. You never know how long you could live after retirement, people are living a lot longer. Plus, you don't wanna go into your retirement years by wearing a vest at some superstore. And you and your loved ones could live longer than anticipated. So having enough for your retirement plan makes your retirement life comfortable and happy. You're not a financial drain on the rest of your family. And it saves you from double the anxiety later on in life, worry and stress. And to be honest, for better or worse, money always has been the source of many issues. So ideally, you can at least put 15 to 20% of your annual salary towards your retirement fund. So if you're earning back to that 150 Gs, which is what you probably need if you're living in Los Angeles or San Francisco or New York, that should be around $22,500 to $30,000 a year. And I suggest having another plan in addition to your employer matched retirement plan. Personally, I have a Roth IRA because it's flexible. It allows you to contribute up to a maximum of $6,000 annually and $7,000 if you're 50 or older. So if your retirement plan budgeting is $22,500 to $30,000, $6,000 of that should go to your Roth IRA. And the excess, $16,500 or $24,000 should go into your 401k. Now, I get the fact that you might just be living paycheck to paycheck, but you need to cut your lifestyle down so that these kind of numbers are achievable for you. Stop buying, you know, effed up Nike shoes and investing in car rims and high dollar dinners. Start to invest in yourself and future and leaving a legacy of wealth. Let me go on to number five, which is the bucket list stuff. Now that you already have a retirement plan, you've got the emergency fund and you're already paying off your debt on time. Now we will go to how you can spend that leftover cash. Hopefully there's still some left. And if you follow my plan and advice, you're going to cut your lifestyle down. Stop wearing designer clothes and purses while living in an apartment. Now we can focus on bucket list things, experiences rather than stuff. I know we all have different priorities and different things that we want to get done. So let's say you always have a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred left over after paying for all that stuff that you buy that you don't even need and all the other stuff that I mentioned earlier. So what are you going to do now? List the things where fifteen hundred can go. Let's say five hundred goes to stocks and investing and three hundred goes to travel fund and three to a housing fund, a couple hundred dollars to towards a car or a car purchase or two hundred dollars to a concert ticket. Well these are just examples of things that you want. You don't have to have a miserable life without experiences. I'm not saying that at all, but leave a majority of your money to go towards savings and investments, savings to invest, and then utilize whatever leftover capital you have. Remember, you pay off your debts, now you start to pay with cash. I like to work with cash because it's more of a pinch. When you go out and buy some stupid shoes you may not ever wear again, but once, you actually feel the effect. Getting into enjoying discipline when it comes to money, having separate accounts for these bucket list and things that you wanna do, is easier for you to see that money accumulating. And then you start to not want to do some of those things as well. That's a side effect. For instance, if you saved for years because you wanted to take a Caribbean cruise and now you're starting to see that money and that cruise time is coming up, you may or may not want to take that cruise or you may. And then you can go ahead and take that vacation because you have the amount of money needed rather than going into your credit cards and having that one vacation 10 years ago and still paying for it 10 years later. Let's say, for example, you want to buy a new car, you know you need one and you've been stacking money away and a car costs I don't know, $25,000 and you've saved 15. The loan amount that you're gonna be taking out is a lot smaller. Or you just buy a car outright cash. Now, a lot of gurus will tell you, no, 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 use debt for your advantage. I personally don't like that. This kind of strategy has kept me financially savvy and safe. There's no need in wasting your money pointlessly. And I think the reason why people fail to make the most of 
their paycheck is that they live beyond their means and they don't know how to budget and discipline themselves. Something that I've restrained myself from doing, and it, it's just been recently that I've let go a little bit to buy a few things here and there. That's because I've been working hard since I was 14. And after making all the right investments, I have a little bit of luxury, but you need to be able to pay yourself first so you can take that money and put it in the appropriate accounts. Remember, pay yourself first so you don't end up being last on your list of building wealth. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this type of real deal content without selling you shit, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And if you wanna know more more about budgeting and the different personalities at work, go ahead and click this video next, Budget Mechanics, Knowing Your Budget Personality.